All right, so prompt engineering is dead, and this is a bold statement, but I'm, I'm saying that it never actually existed. And if you've ever done uh, prompt engineering, you probably know that it's uh, kind of bullshit because you kind of try to ask the LLM to act nicely and do what you want to do, do what you want it to do. And so uh, this talk, I'm going to walk you through uh, a story of mine where I managed to improve our kind of sample chatbot that we have in our uh, website. And I made it, I made, I, it was possible for me to make it like uh, five x uh, better without actually doing any prompt engineering because, you know, it's not really engineering, right? And so we have a chatbot in our application, in our website. It's Iraq based, super simple. It just allows you to ask questions about our documentation and gives you answers. Super simple, super straightforward, the easiest rug you can think about. And I, when I deployed it the first time, it worked uh, kind of okay. And I tried to make it work better. And you can see some examples here. I tried to, on, I, I needed to have him only answer things that are related to Traceful because this is my company. I don't want you know, it to answer things about the weather or something else. I wanted to answer about trace loop only. And I want it to be useful. So if someone asks a question, I want the question to be useful for the user who asked it. And I wanted to make less mistakes. It was making so many mistakes. And I wanted to just get a little bit better. And, and so, you know, what, what are we doing at this stage? We're doing prompt engineering. But why do I even need to iterate on prompts? I just want give, to give it a couple of examples. This is good. This is bad. And have it somehow learn, you know, uh, how to how to follow my instructions properly and always and and so I begin imagining you know I begin imagining how I want to build this automatically improving machine that will be kind of like an agent that will research the web find the latest and greatest prompt engineering techniques and uh, and then apply them to my prompt over and over and over again until I get the best prompt for my super simple rug pipeline and, and to do that, to, to, to run this uh, kind of uh, machine, I needed to uh, do some a bit more work, right? Because I need, you've, you've all been in a lot of conversations here about evaluators, so you know that we need an evaluator so that my mach crazy machine can actually know how to improve and if it's actually improving. And so uh, to do that, I need to create a data set of like questions I want to ask my uh, chatbot about the documentation. Uh, and then I want to build an evaluator that can evaluate how well my RAG pipeline is responding to those questions. And then I have the agent that's kind of like iterating on the prompts until I get to the best uh, prompt ever. And so this is kind of like how it will look like schematically, right? I have the RAG pipeline, I have the evaluator, and then I'm going to have my auto-improving agent. Let's begin. RAG pipeline, super simple, I have a Chroma database have an open AI and some simple prompts that, uh, you know, take a question, find relevant documents in the uh, Chroma database, and just uh, uh, output an answer. Uh, so you'll see, I'm just, it's this super simple one. I just ask it a question, how do I get started with trace loop? And then uh, it runs, takes a couple of seconds, and then we're gonna see an answer, and we're gonna see the trace, just so you, if you never, if you've never seen a rug pipeline, and, and Guessing you also write back, and this, you know, this is how it looks like, right? A couple of calls to OpenAI, Chroma database, and then you know, at the final stage, we get like a, the, all the context into OpenAI, and we get the final answer uh, to the user. Works great, and we have a couple of prompts here we'd probably want to optimize. Wait, this is not what I wanted to do. Uh, great. Okay, now let's go to the next step my evaluator. So what do we need for evaluation? So this is not a talk about evaluators. I'm sure you've heard a lot of talks about evaluators uh, uh, in this conference. But uh, I'm going to tell you what, what kind of evaluator uh, did I choose uh, to use. Uh, so first, you, know, you need a data set of questions and, and you know, a way to evaluate these questions. And then the evaluator is going to kind of invoke the, the RAG pipeline and then get answer from the RAG pipeline. And then going to kind of evaluate and get a score maybe a reason if why the score is low or high. And then this is kind of what we're going to use for the agent will be the last step that can auto-improve uh, the prompt. And so, you know, there's a couple of, there's a lot of types of evaluators. I think we've been talking a lot about LLM as a judge. And I'm, spoiler alert, I'm going to choose an LLM as a judge here because it's easier to build and it's easier to deploy. But there are also a lot of different types of evaluators, kind of like classic NLP metrics, you know, if you want to do something which is embedded based or, or all of these colors 
uh, uh, that can also help you uh, evaluate different types of tasks, like translation tasks and, uh, and uh, even uh, text summarization tasks. And I think the main difference that I see uh, between you know, classic NLP metrics and LLM as a judge is that classic, classic NLP metrics usually require some ground truth. And so I need to have you know, my questions and then the actual answers. And then if I have the actual answers, when I'm invoking my RAD pipeline, I can actually get, you know, I can compare the ground truth answer against what the, whatever the RAD pipeline returned. Great. And then the LLM as a judge, they can work with the ground truth. Sometimes you can build a judge that can judge an answer based on some real answer that you expect, but they can also, uh, they can also uh, try to assess an answer just based on like the question and the context without any, any ground truth. For my example, because I, I know the data set and I know everything, I'm going to build a ground truth based LLM as a judge. Um, but before we're going to do that, I'm going to talk to you about where can we evaluate, where can we run these evaluators, right? So if we have an evaluator, what can we evaluate? I'm taking like, I'm, I'm saying that I want to evaluate my RAD pipeline, but what exactly do I mean? So a RAD pipeline is basically two steps, right? We get the data from the vector database and we run the uh, called OpenAI with some context uh, from the vector database. So we can kind of evaluate each step separately. You can evaluate each one and we kind of call it like a unit testing, right? We can even evaluate how well the vector database is fetching the data that I need to answer the question. Or I can run it on like the complete execution of the RAG. I can take the input, the question, and take the answer, the final answer that I'm getting from the, from the RAG pipeline and just evaluate uh, how well uh, the answer is given that question. And I can also dig, uh, dive deeper into everything that's happening in the internals, look at the context, look at the question, look at the answer, and everything all together try to evaluate, given the, given the context and given the question, how well is the answer performing. So again, I'm going to do a simple LM as a judge, and I'm going to take 20 examples of questions that I've uh, created. And for each question, I'm going to write what do I expect the answer to contain? So we're going to have like three facts that it, the answer that was generated by the RAD pipeline should have. And then the evaluator is simply going to take the answer that we've gotten from the RAD pipeline and make sure that the facts actually appear in the answer. And so we're going to get, you know, per each fact, we're going to get pass or fail. So it's a Boolean uh, a response and then a reason. So if it fails, I'm, I want to see a reason, like why the judge thinks that the uh, fact is not, does not appear in, uh, in the answer that we got. And so then we're going to get a score, which is numeral, which is great because we like working with numeral scores, uh, which is kind of like summarizing all the facts across all the, all the examples. So we have three facts times 20 examples. It's 60, 60 total facts that we need to evaluate. And we're going to just check how many facts were right out of the total facts that we expected to have in the RAG generated answers. Uh, so let's say it in action, uh, and as you can see, this is like the questions and the facts and everything. This is what I, uh, I, uh, I created to, to make sure that the RAG operates, and then I'm going to run it, uh, the evaluator. And what you'll see is that the evaluator is, doing, is running evaluations, right? So it's taking question, calling the RAG, getting an answer, and then checking that answer against each of the facts that I've given it. And then I'm going to create a score, and you'll see the score you know, slowly uh, progressing as I'm running the evaluator. This is like a super slow process and I don't have enough time to actually show you uh, it till the end, but it, it works. It takes just a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay. And, and. Okay. Great. Less, last step is our uh, agent, the agent that will optimize the prompt. We have everything set up, now we can actually build the agent. So I'm going to build a researcher agent and it's going to take, you know, as I said, like prompting guides online, it's going to crawl the web, it's going to find prompting guides, it's going to get an initial prompt and then it's going to take, you know, it's going to take, it's going to run the evaluator once to get like the initial score and then if we get the initial score, it's going to get the reasons why we failed some of the evaluations is going to combine the reasons for failures plus prompting guides to get a new prompt. And then we're going to get a new prompt. And then we're going to feed it back to the evaluator, run it again, get a new score, and then run it again with the agent so we can actually even improve the score a bit more. If you've ever done kind of ML, classic ML training, this is kind of like a classic uh, machine learning training, but with a bit of vibes. 
Uh, so let's see it in action. We're gonna, I'm, I've used the crew AI uh, for, for doing that. And I'm going to kick off. And you can see it will take a couple of seconds. We can actually see uh, the agent you know, thinking and then calling the evaluator. And then the evaluator will run and get the responses and get the score. And I hope the, yeah, I hope I can, yeah, it's great. It's running the evaluators. It's calculating the score. And, uh, and then, you know, the agent is running back that I skipped a couple of minutes here and then, you know, we got uh, a response. And then now the agent, the researcher agent is trying to understand, okay, why the prompt wasn't working? Can I find ways to improve RAG pipeline based prompts? And then it's going to like regenerate new, new kind of like a uh, prompt with maybe a bit more uh, instructions or kind of best practices on how to write prompts. And then you see, calling the evaluator again to get a, a new, uh, a new score. So we know if we need to, to optimize or not. Great. OK, this is when I run it uh, once. Actually, this, the initial score was, was OK, was 0 0.4. And I run it just two iterations. And I got like a really like a long kind of prompt that you expect like, uh, to see from like, uh, someone who's done a lot of prompt engineering is like give it a lot of instructions and telling it how, to, how it should react and like, how it shouldn't. You're like an expert in in answering users' questions about Traceloop, it was really nice to see it happening without me having to. I write a lot. I wrote a lot of code to make the agent work, but I didn't do. Needed, I didn't need to do a lot of prompt engineering. I didn't need to do a, any prompt engineering, right? So it kind of worked. It was really, really nice, and the score actually jumped by a lot. And I stopped at 0 0.9 because it means that like 90% of the of the facts were correct. Great, I can stop. So. If there's something you want to get out of this uh, talk is that you can also vibe, <laughs> vibe engineer your prompts. You, not, you don't need to manually iterate in prompts. You just need to build evaluators. And then you kind of can run gradient ascend, gradient ascend on your evaluator. So you have your score. You can kind of slowly try to optimize on your score, either automatically with an agent like I did, or manually by just like uh, reading those manuals about how to write the best prompts and then fixing them again and again and again. Some future thoughts to, to wrap it up. We have two minutes, OK? Um, and I have a fitting. So I have 20 examples, and then I run the evaluator. So maybe, maybe, maybe the prompt that I'm getting will work really well for those 20 examples. But then if I give it like another example, it will be horrible. So yes, I was overfitting there because I just gave it the, the entire 20, 20 examples. Ideally, would have more examples. And then kind of like, again, classic machine learning, split it into train test. Uh, sets or train test evil sets and then run them like separately right you you take the train set this is what you're trying to optimize but then you also use the test set to make sure that you actually you, you're not overfitting to your uh, training data set right so you don't want to give the uh, optimizer too much context or that unless it just will know how to answer those specific questions and nothing else uh, I told you that prompt engineering is dead, but I've actually done a lot of prompt engineering for this demo because I needed to engineer the agent that is optimizing my prompts. So I have, it was horrible. But I've done a lot of uh, prompt engineering for that. Maybe maybe I can also do this work for the evaluator prompts or f even for the agent prompt. It's kind of like this meta talk where who's even writing prompts here? Like I'm using the agent to optimize itself. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. I, I might try it some weekend. It's kind of interesting. Uh, some links, you can try this out. Uh, it's available in our repo. It's traceloop slash auto prompting demo, and you can run it. Uh, it should run. Uh, I tested it yesterday. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me uh, outside, or you can even book some time with me just by uh, not clicking this link, but just following this link. Thank you very much.